Whoa! Ha! Still up. Today is my last full day to prepare for the photography show because I'm working all week and then leaving on Friday. And uh, one of the projects we're doing at the show is on shooting and developing film. And uh, just in case the weather is really, really bad next week and we can't get outside to shoot some film, I have to come and shoot a couple of rolls now so that we have something to develop. So right now I've come out along the river, big surprise, with the F100 and a couple of rolls of Ilford FP4 Plus. And we're gonna see what we can find. So for any aspiring Bond villains out there, there's a great house here on the river. It was for sale, but it's not now, so I guess there's a new Bond villain moved in. So I'm going to get a shot of this house on film. Seriously, who has a boat dock underneath their house? I don't shoot film anywhere near as often as I used to. I, uh, I actually quit in 2002 when I whoa, got my first pair of DSLRs and then decided to start up again when I got a really good deal on a Nikon at a car boot sale. A pound. And ever since then it's just been, yeah, screw it, why not? So, now I have about 20 film cameras, full darkroom. Actually, I got enough stuff to probably make up three or four full darkrooms. Uh, yeah, let's get a shot of that. So the reason I got so into it second time around, when I used to shoot film before I switched to digital, I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing. I mean, I was getting nice enough photos, but most of the time I didn't know why and uh, I'd, I'd never developed my own before and uh, so after I've been shooting digital for like 10 years and figured out what I was doing I felt I was you know confident enough that I could shoot film and not screw it up too badly so yeah so I still like it for black and white I find it somewhat therapeutic shooting film but especially developing it it's still weird shooting and not having that reflex to look at the back of the camera afterwards but uh, you get used to it so I'm at Holton Weir and the water levels are about uh, three or four feet lower than it was in the last video so it's uh, back to its normal level but I want to try and get a sh no I was gonna try and get a shot of the bridge but I think it would blend in too much to the background but the weir itself looks kind of cool, it's just if I can get down low enough without slipping into the water myself, which I really don't want to do. The problem with shooting on this jet is that it's virtually impossible to find a spot that isn't covered in seagull crap. So putting your bag down can be a pain. But I have decided that I'm going to get a shot looking that way as well. So over the last five years I have collected far more film gear than I actually need. Not because I have to, but because I want to. I enjoy it. Um, but kind of the whole point of this thing we're doing at the photography show next week is to show you that you really don't need a whole lot of gear. And you don't need a massive outlay to shoot and develop your own black and white film. So we're going to be shooting around the show, around Birmingham, in the show if possible, um, with my friends Richard and Joseph, and there might be another Richard, and possibly a surprise guest. So one of the things I'm always asked about when I shoot film is how I meet her, and assuming I don't slip, oh there we go. And it largely depends on what I'm shooting and whether the camera has a built-in meter. Uh, today I'm out shooting the F100, which has a pretty good meter in it. So I am using the camera's built-in meter. That simple. Um, plus there's, there's no real sort of consistent subject. It's all just random whatever I happen to see while I'm out today. Um, if I'm 
doing something with flash I'm always using a handheld incident meter or if I'm photographing people I'm almost always using a handheld incident meter um, because a lot of my cameras don't have meters built in so it just lets me get consistency whether I'm shooting 35mm, medium format, ooh, whatever yeah. between different cameras plus my Sekonic meter, it's an old one it's not a new one, I did get a 758DR for a while um, because I wanted to do more with a light meter with digital and, and trying to remember how far out each camera was from what the meter said it should be was just getting to be a pain in the arse so I wanted a meter I could calibrate that I could store profiles on for different cameras um, but in the end I just wasn't really using it as much as I uh, thought I would for digital and when I did it wasn't really that much of an advantage over the one I already had so I got rid of it um, but I use an old Sekonic L718 which is one of their earlier generation digital light meters and uh, yeah it works great and it's spot on for film every single time this is somewhere I really need to do a shoot at some point because it just looks kind of cool and creepy and it's an old railway support bridge this, whoop, this uh, cycle path up here used to be a railway line now it's not am I in focus? I am now so yeah so that used to be a railway line and all they did was take up the track and tarmac the path and grow a few plants and trees and things so uh, we want to get over there well, I think I'm finally after five years shooting film again breaking out of the habit of looking at the LCD after I've taken a shot and we're on 26 right now so I've got 10 shots left on this roll uh, I mean then I have to put this or you or both away for a minute while I cross over there bye alrighty so I am now at, ooh, crap. I am now at about 28 shots I think or 29 so Seven or eight left to go. Uh, I'm fighting with trees. But we are almost at uh, balloon. Maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes out maybe, 10, 15 minutes. And I'm gonna get a few shots from on the bridge up there. Probably one looking down the bridge. And then one looking off the bridge towards the river. Uh, we'll go this way. And, uh, whoa. And then, it's whether or not I want to load up another roll and walk to Caton and go get something to eat in the pub, which I might do actually. Because they do quite good food in the pub. Whoa! Ha! Still up. So once I've got everything shot, I still have my N90S that I got to burn through as well and I didn't bring that with me today, I've gone the wrong way. And I didn't bring that with me today. That has about 18 shots of a 36 exposure roll. And we're going somewhere dark, so let me bump you up. There we go. So, I got to empty that. That one's had a long-term project in it for the last couple of years, so what I might do is just rewind the film at 18 shots and call it a day on that project at least for now because I didn't shoot anything on it last year because the weather was just so awful and the people I wanted involved in the project the scheduling conflicts and other problems so alright this camera's getting kind of heavy so I'm going to pack you away and let my arm recover bye we are now at the forge which Sometimes looks cool, sometimes looks terrible. Right now it's kind of meh. But early in the morning when the sun's coming up from over there, all this gets backlit and it looks gorgeous and bright and colourful and 
right now I don't even know if you can hear me okay so that was shot 29 so seven left to go so I'm gonna be arriving in Birmingham on Friday so that I can be out the show first thing on Saturday morning without having to rush to Lancaster train station at half past four in the morning and uh, we've been booked into what is apparently the worst hotel in Birmingham so either it's just gonna be kind of bad or it's gonna be really really horrible and if it's really really horrible given that I'm gonna be shooting so much film I'm, I'm actually kind of excited if it's just me I'm gonna be bummed and disappointed but if it's really really awful and hideous and Crap's peeling off the walls and yeah that could be fun especially as there's a couple of models that I know that are going to be at the show and have said that if it is really really shitty they'll come model for me in the hotel so yeah so I had to put you guys away because it started pissing down so I ended up going to the little burger place up there which is really really good if you're ever at Crookaloon try and be here before three o'clock and you can get some really good burgers um, but the first roll of film is now finished so so now the camera will stay empty until next week at the show I really wanted to show a lot more today of what I was shooting and because I can't show you this until we develop it next week and then I, I gotta scan it in after that um, but the weather's just not been great today it was actually sunny when I left the house and now it's raining so but that's March in England for you <laughs> Hopefully next weekend at the show, we're a little further down south and it won't be uh, it won't be quite so wet and horrible and nasty. Because last year was pretty good. But yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day there. So, bye bye.